uh, an open learning consultant from, from Australia. And here in the studio with us tonight, we have Professor Insung Chong, who's a, a colleague of mine. And we have uh, recently been in, involved in uh, researching and, and writing and editing a book on uh, quality assurance in open and distance and e-learning. And uh, we thought it would be interesting just to talk about uh, our impressions mm -hmm. from writing the book and what is happening and what needs to, to happen. Okay. okay yeah. And so um, maybe I could just kick off with the first question. Mm -hmm. I mean, from your point of view, why do you feel it's so important that we have quality assurance in open and distance and e-learning? Why, okay. why is it necessary? As you probably know, um, there are so many students these days and so many uh, distance education providers, institutions, they offer distance education programs. Uh, for example, in Asia only, there are more than 5 million students who receive um, distance education. So because of the increase of number of students, uh, we need to pay more attention to the quality issues. Otherwise, those students will um, maybe in some, some cases don't get the quality education. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need to pay more attention to quality assurance and that's why many countries these days are beginning to talk about or discuss about the quality assurance framework or policy. Yes, I mean, mm. I mean, you and I obviously have had many, many years involved with open and distance learning and we, right. we, we're great enthusiasts mm. for open and distance learning, mm. but we have to be honest, we know that not all governments, mm. not all members of the community, not all employers uh, think that uh, these new forms of teaching and learning are necessarily as good as the more conventional ones. Right, right. So, and you know, we know that uh, um, in in some countries, mm. uh, in fact, now uh, as we've heard, they're actually withdrawing support for the idea of open and distance learning. So That's it's true. obviously very important right. that we make sure. Uh, that at least it measures up to mm. the quality of conventional education. I, I believe we should go further than that. I think yeah, we should yeah, actually. I think so. Yeah. You think so? Yes, yeah. I think I it think has we should to be actually very, we should have a very strong quality assurance uh, framework. I think one of the problems uh. with quality assurance, it tends to be concerned with making sure you meet minimal standards. And mm. I think we should be trying to show that open and distance learning is mm. better than conventional. And really. there are some other cases as well, even now. Within well, the you Asia. know about universe. Yeah. I was just going to say universities. Yeah. Yes. Turubuka. Would you like to tell us something about the way Tabuka. they went about quality assurance? Yeah, University of Tabuka, they have developed this extensive quality assurance manual which lists all the detailed job descriptions of each position of their staff, mm -hmm. staff members. And then they uh, also relate uh, the, the staff's performance. Mm -hmm. to the quality assurance matter. So, so, so it's performance-based quality assurance. It's not just, uh, you know, list all the quality assurance standards, yeah. but they, they are very closely related to step performance and then learning outcomes. Yes. So they yeah. have done that, and they also received uh, external, invited external yes. review. I think they've had ISO accreditation. ISO, and then yeah. IERC, ICD, ICD, ICD yeah. and yeah. then... Um, what else? Uh, their their own countries. Uh, by from day from yeah, beat. but but it was interesting that this actually started, as I understand it, as an internal process. Yes. In other words, they didn't start on quality assurance in order to meet the government's That's expectations. True. They did it to improve their quality right. and continuously improve their quality, uh -huh. and then said to the government, "Would you like to come and check on?" Yeah, and you know, external before uh, you invite the external uh, reviewers. You do contribute, uh, you do uh, focus on internal improvement mm. first. Mm -hmm. And then you invite external uh, uh, reviewers. Because it's important that you develop a culture within your institution to improve the quality. Yeah, and so I think. So that's the key, I guess. That I think uh, that, 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 that business of trying to inculcate mm. a, a culture of continual. Improvement, improvement and, and the phrase that I sometimes mm. use is reflective practice too. Mm. So you're not only teaching or being an instructional designer or putting an IT system in place, but you're saying, how can I continually 
uh, in, improve, in improve, improve yeah. this. And I think going back to the UT thing, mm. the uh, University of Tulbuka, the other thing that impresses me is I think all too often there's a danger that quality assurance can be rhetoric, you know, mm. high claims and right. so on. But it's very interesting the process of actually drilling down, and mm. I've had a chance to, to see mm. a bit of this at mm. uh, Universitas Turabuca. Mm. And then you find when you get to their degree program, I mm. think it's a degree program for teachers, Yes, you, you find teachers, that right. all the measures that mm. apply at the institutional level mm. still apply equally well, well in that course or program, and I think that's very yeah, impressive. Yeah, and it, it was actually, as you said, top-down approach. You know, the leader initiates this quality assurance activity within the uh, Tabuka, within the institution, but then uh, it went to down, down yes. to the personnel, I mean, the, all the STEM members. And they together develop uh, detailed, the manual, detailed job descriptions. Whether you should go for a centralized approach for quality mm. assurance in an institution or whether you should try to get the culture to permeate, to mm. be embedded right in across the university. Are you in favor I, of one model or the other? I, I think uh, uh, at the beginning that you need to have some kind of a unit or a team which oversees whole process. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, you can uh, the responsibilities are not clear. So, in and in case of, I mean, we are talking about University of Buka, but in case of other universities that have been very successful in quality assurance activities, they usually have a centralized unit, and then at the same time they, you know, share their responsibilities with others. But I think at the beginning, especially, we need a central. And that's interesting. Unit. I mean, I'm not going to name the country, mm -hmm. but there's one country in Asia that I, mm -hmm. I know, I think, particularly well. And mm -hmm. they've recently introduced a quality assurance system. Mm -hmm. And what worries me is it seems to be that the, the, uh, the body responsible for quality assurance has said, we want a quality assurance committee to be set up in every university. Mm. But what I don't see there is any sort of follow through in terms of in-service training or enabling people to understand really what their role and status and responsibilities are. Maybe that's not the institution itself. They want to establish the quality assurance mechanism. It's uh, from outside, yeah. right? Yeah. In that case, I, I think it's a little different. Yes. Uh, maybe we need actually both. Uh, we have to have uh, some kind of, uh, I, I think for me, a centralized system with this uh, commitment mm -hmm. from the members or leadership support yes. are really important. The other thing that mm. uh, you and I have discussed in the book and the contributors to the book too is this question about whether one should have the same quality assurance mm. framework and system for conventional education or whether, in fact, open and distance learning, and particularly e-learning, mm. call for some different uh, approaches. How do you feel about that? I, I think the general framework should be, say, should be the same. Mm -hmm. But the specifics, there are unique points that uh, e-learning or distance education uh, represent, uh, presents. So in that case, to address the uniqueness of the distance education e-learning, I think we need a more, uh, a little different maybe measures to assure the quality. But we are mm. with things like Web2. I mean, we are actually introducing some new concepts, yeah, aren't we? Like constructivist true. and connectivist uh, learning mm. and collaborative learning. And Sir John Daniel was talking this morning about moving to a situation where the student started to develop his or her mm. own own curriculum. Mm. So I would have thought that that might call for different measures, mm. different Yeah, I, I think in that case we need uh, some different measures and a more specific, um, you, you know, that's, that's to address the uniqueness mm -hmm. of e-learning or mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. But why do we address those issues? It's under like, in order to facilitate learning, collaborative learning. That could apply to both uh, distance education and conventional learning as yeah. well. So 
What I'm saying is to we, we adopt the same structure, same questions, but the more detailed ones could be different. I think the other issue that, that comes up is that mm. um, some people re resist or resent the idea of quality assurance because they say this is right. a further example of the corporatization of That's our universities right. and it leads to a lot of paperwork mm -hmm. and a lot of bureaucracy and so on. Mm -hmm. So um, how, do we, how do we respond to that? How do we try to win hearts and minds and get quality assurance I, mainstreamed I, into the system? I, I guess um, when you look at quality assurance as a control or management, uh, it's kind of very difficult uh, for you know providers to accept mm -hmm. the quality control framework, right? But when you look at this as a your own self improvement, this is a tool that I like to improve your, uh, myself. Then um, you can more easily adapt, or you can even initiate quality assurance activities within your society, I mean, within institution, and go beyond that, and inviting quality, uh, external quality assurance teams to, to oversee yours, assess yours. So I guess it's a matter of, it's not, it's not that you want to do it, you have to do it, or uh, mm. it's, uh, I guess it's on both. There is a need that you have to show that you are providing a quality program, right? And at the same time, you, in order to survive or develop yourself, you have to improve your quality. Mm -hmm. Having the, the systems in place to recognize when things go wrong right. or help to put them right, right you know? So that's, that's, I think, a very important uh, factor. All right, well, uh, Nice talking with you again, and I know this conversation <laughs> will, will go on, and I'm sure that the quality assurance agenda will keep on, uh, you know, changing. And tonight yeah. we've only talked about higher education, but there's also quality assurance and open schooling yeah. and uh, non-formal education. Non -formal education and so on. So there's a lot more work for us and for other people to do. Thank okay. you very much. Thank, Thank you.